okay uh, hypothyroidism i have already completed a video on hyperthyroidism you see that video also see the video on actions of the thyroid hormones as well as the synthesis so how this question can be asked okay it can be a straightforward question a part of the long essay wherein they are asking you regarding the synthesis of the thyroid hormones and describe the actions of the thyroid hormones and add a note on hypothyroidism but it can be a clinical long essay uh, which goes like this a 50 year old lady presents with fatigue and uh, slowness of movements she also complains of loss of appetite a very important point they give in the exam is intolerance to cold along with that there is a reduction in the heart rate suggesting that there is bradycardia so intolerance to cold is the clinching point here which points towards the diagnosis of hypothyroidism if it was intolerance to heat then it would have been hyperthyroidism along with tachycardia these are the two important points we should look for in the question then the next question explain the actions of the hormones involved so hormones involved are our t3 and t4 and we are addressing this question in this video explain the pathophysiological basis of signs and symptoms in the ebo case so let's see what we are supposed to write regarding hypothyroidism so first and foremost thing is that hypothyroidism is reduction in the activity of the thyroid gland because of which there is reduced secretion of these two important hormones that is t3 and t4 always good to mention the causes the most important cause is iodine deficiency most common and most important and second is what is called as uh, autoimmune disease which is called as hashimoto's thyroiditis even we had a autoimmune disease in hyperthyroidism which was called as graves disease similarly in hypo also we have one autoimmune disease which is called as hashimoto's thyroiditis so it's an autoimmune disease wherein antibodies are produced against an enzyme what enzyme is that that is called as peroxidase so if you go back and uh, understand the synthesis of the thyroid hormones we uh, come across this enzyme which is very much important for the synthesis of the thyroid gland so if there are antibodies against peroxidase then synthesis of t3 and t4 is not going to take place and hence it results in hypothyroidism these are called as anti tpo antibody that is anti thyroid peroxidase antibodies and we should also understand that there are two types of hypothyroidism one is called as a primary hypothyroidism another one is called as a secondary so what's the basic difference between primary and secondary the primary is the one wherein the pathology is existing in the thyroid gland itself the thyroid gland itself is producing less amount of t3 and t4 now the secondary is one wherein the pathology is not in the thyroid gland it can be elsewhere most commonly it is in the pituitary gland so when the thyroid gland is producing less amount of t3 and t4 what do you think is going to happen to the levels of tsh now because of this feedback regulation in primary hypo hypothyroidism the tsh levels will be high but in secondary wherein the cause is in the pituitary gland the tsh secretion from the pituitary gland itself is less so when tsh secretion is less what is going to happen to the secretion of t3 and t4 it's going to be less so how we differentiate between primary and secondary by the way of tsh if t3 t4 is less and tsh is also less that means it is falling under the category of secondary hypothyroidism now if t3 t4 is less and the tsh is more that means the cause is primary hypothyroidism okay and then coming to the clinical features now clinical features are not as simple as we saw in hyperthyroidism because here hypothyroidism can affect the newborn babies also okay that is called as infantile hypothyroidism and hypothyroidism can affect adults also which is called as the adult hypothyroidism another name given for infantile hypothyroidism is cretinism remember cretinism can be a short note it can be a short note okay so what is this cretinism it is extreme form of hypothyroidism which is seen either during the fetal life or infancy or childhood again always good to remember few of the causes if you want to write you write or else anyhow you are going to study these things in pediatrics one of the cause is anomaly of the thyroid gland which is called as thyroid dysgenesis it can be pituitary dysfunction one very important cause is maternal iodine deficiency and even certain medication so let's understand the features of cretinism as to what all is it that we see here okay the first three features the mental retardation retarded physical growth and delayed milestones why these are occurring why because we know that t3 and t4 is extremely important for the growth of the brain during the fetal life okay it's very important for the growth of the brain during the fetal life the neonatal development of the fetal nervous system is dependent on t3 and t4 so when t3 and t4 is lacking the neonatal development of the fetal nervous system is not going to happen and that is going to result in mental retardation we also know t3 and t4 are important for myelination of the 
nerves myelination of the nerves they, this is also called as cerebration this is also called as cerebration of the nervous system so because t3 and t4 are not there all these things are not going to happen and hence the newborn baby is going to have mental retardation there is going to be also retarded physical growth why because we know t3 t4 are essential and they stimulate the maturation of the epiphyseal bone centers because of the mental retardation as well as the physical growth the milestones are going to be delayed so all these three things can be attributed to the actions of t3 and t4 on the development of the fetal nervous system and the cns to be more specific then here we can see that these babies are also having pot belly so what's the reason for the pot belly the pot belly is basically because of accumulation of the fluid in the abdomen now why that is occurring that is occurring because of the reduction in the basal metabolic rate so whenever there is reduced basal metabolic rate the fluids are going to get accumulated in the abdomen that results in pot belly even pot belly can occur because of the slowing of the intestinal movements we know that t3 and t4 is essential for the intestinal movements and no intestinal movements constipation and bloating can also result in pot belly next is we see that these uh, newborn kids they have a large protruding tongue now why there is a large protruding tongue we know t3 t4 is essential for metabolism of glycosaminoglycans like hyaluronic acid as well as chondroitin sulfate so the metabolism is not going to occur if they are low in amount that is t3 and t4 and hence there is accumulation of hyaluronic acid and chondroitin sulfate in the tongue which is going to result in swelling of the tongue and the tongue protrudes out of the oral cavity then we see that there is a flat nose why flat nose because ossification okay ossification of these bones is not going to occur properly what kind of ossification did i tell you in the uh, actions the what is called as enchondral ossification is going to suffer that's why these people they are going to have these children they are going to have flat nose next they also have a dry skin why there is a dry skin no these things can be also there in adult hypothyroidism few of them why there is a dry skin because there is loss of what is called as epidermal barrier there is loss of epidermal barrier which limits the water loss okay which is going to limit the water loss so hence there is more amount of water loss occurring from the skin resulting in dry skin and also because of reduction in the basal metabolic rate there is reduced secretions coming from the glands like the sweat glands as well as the sebaceous glands even these things contribute to the dry skin so these are the clinical features and these are the causes or the pathophysiological basis of the clinical features which occur in cretinism next let's go to adult hypothyroidism the first feature is lethargy and tiredness again attributed to the action of the t3 and t4 on the central nervous system which is very much important for wakefulness and alertness and also attributed to reduction in the basal metabolic rate weight gain again occurs because of accumulation of the fluid because of less bmr loss of appetite again reduction in the bmr is there and also the action on the git intolerance to cold again can be attributed to less bmr and hence less heat production in the body bradycardia attributed to the action on the cardiovascular system to be more specific on the beta receptors which are present in the heart okay then there is slowness of the movements and also there is slow speech a very important feature which we get here is delayed deep tendon reflexes okay why we get this because the t3 and t4 they are going to stimulate the synapses which are present in the spinal cord okay which contribute to the tendon reflexes like they are the one these are the synapses which are going to supply the muscle spindle and hence they also help in maintenance of the tone so when t3 and t4 is less the stimulation of the synapses which are present in the spinal cord is less and that is going to result in the deep deep deep, deep uh, delayed deep tendon reflexes very much classically seen in ankle jerk okay when we do the ankle jerk immediately we have to see that there is a plant of flexion but in the in these patients who are suffering from hypothyroidism plantar flexion occurs but it takes a little bit more time than the usual that is what is called as delayed deep tendon reflexes mixed edema again with the thick scaly and dry skin occurs because of accumulation of again same thing there is glycosaminoglycans like hyaluronic acid and chondroitin sulfate because the metabolism is not going to occur and these they again they uh they are going to cause accumulation of fluid with them that is resulting in mixed edema menorrhagia and infertility are the actions attributed to the reproductive system of the t3 and t4 and at last these patients will have constipation whereas in hyperthyroidism they are going to have diarrhea why because t3 and t4 is extremely important for the movement of the intestine so the movement of the intestines is less hence these patients can also have constipation okay so here we can see puffiness of the face there is mixed edema here we can see the lower eyelid the upper eyelid in and around the eye there is a lot of uh, swelling there is a lot of edema which is occurring before the treatment and once we start the treatment with thyroid hormones we can see that the puffiness has totally disappeared so one of the very important features of hypothyroidism is this edema which is called as the mixed edema and at last we can also write the diagnosis so what's what how will we diagnose very easy to diagnose we can do free t3 and t4 
they will be low and we can also do the th such and if th such is high then the cause is primary hypothyroidism and if the th such is low the cause is secondary hypothyroidism and we can also rule out this autoimmune disorder which is called as Hashimoto's thyroiditis by doing what is called as anti-TPO. What is anti-TPO? What did I tell you what it was? It is nothing but thyroid per oxidase antibodies. Thyroid per oxidase antibodies. So this is what you are supposed to write regarding hypothyroidism. Thank you for listening.